everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide, your insider's guide to franchises in the Heartland area. I'm Blake Martin, small business franchise owner and your Heartland Franchise Guy. This is the place for education, resources, and advocacy for your local franchising field and for local entrepreneurs looking to learn about the franchising field. Here's some really good news for anyone looking to invest in a franchise these days. There's an entire niche industry out there that specializes in lending specifically to local franchise startups. Moreover, they understand franchising at a really deep level because this is what they do all day, every day. They've lent to many of the franchises already that you probably have your eyes on or have had your eyes on. And in many cases, they're achieving that lending by collaborating with some of the banks that you already know. This tends to make the funding process a lot simpler and quicker for you, the person looking for the business. With us today as our guest is one of the leading lending specialists in this niche industry, Wendy Skemmer, Senior Consultant with Benetrends Financial. Wendy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Blake. It's a pleasure to join you and share all my knowledge on franchise financing with your group. Well, we appreciate it. It's good to have you along for the ride. So let's jump right into it because there is a lot of ground that we can cover in this. It seems like every time we have conversations, there's another wrinkle to this, another, uh, another piece of the field that you're in and the organization that you're a part of. But for starters, speaking of your organization, so your company, Benetrends Financial, was actually founded by and is still run by an ERISA attorney back like in the 1980s, right? Exactly right, because we were so young then, but Benetrends was not. We were founded in the early 1980s. Leonard Fisher is the ERISA tax attorney who pioneered this program and has been helping folks fund their businesses in a very smart way ever since. Still very active uh, here with Better Trends and actually just published a great book called Make It Rain. Great tool for new entrepreneurs and existing entrepreneurs. Make sure we think about all the basics that can help folks become successful after they find themselves in business for themselves. Got it. So the, the book is Make It Rain by Len Fisher. Correct. Good to know. All right. So if anybody misses anything during this podcast, we can probably pick up on some of it in that book. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so do you want me to just quickly go into what we do here at Benetrends? A lot of folks look at us and wonder, you're a full service retirement planning company. How are you a lending broker? Where do you fit in? Yep, please do. Go ahead. So we are. We're a full service retirement planning company. And why that's important is because we're not just here for the beginning when we help you get your franchisees funded. We're here for the life of their business and after, because that's when we build generational wealth and really protect wealth. Uh, our goal as a lending broker is to help your, your franchisees find the appropriate tool to fund their business. And sometimes it's a couple different ways that maybe you're thinking outside of the traditional lending box. I always like to okay. say, when I go to buy a house, I'm always gonna think about a mortgage. It's just a natural progression to go to the mortgage broker and get an idea of what funding available, what funding I would have available to me or pre-qualify for in yeah. the world of going to find a house. And usually, a, for example, a real estate agent or broker is not willing to kind of show me neighborhoods until they understand that I understand what I can afford because I want to make sure that I'm looking at houses that are in my budget. And I feel like the same thing with businesses. So what we do as a lending broker is look at a candidate's strengths and what they bring to the table. Are they working? Are they not working? What assets do they have? What debt do they have? What debt flavor do they have? And we help match them with the appropriate funding resource, whether, okay. it's, whether it's debt, or whether there's a way to potentially use their retirement funds without tax or penalty. There's a, a research process that goes into it to try and figure out the, the best way to get them from A to Z without uh, missing a beat. Because a lot of folks think I just get a small business loan, Blake, and we know that there's a variety of ways that folks can get to that goal. Yeah. And maybe small business loan is a part of that, of that process. 
So I, I want to go back to that piece on the on the rollover of the retirement funds in a second, because that's one that I get a lot of questions about. But backing up a little bit further, you were talking about you were drawing the analogy of when you go to get a house, one of the first things you should do is go to a mortgage specialist to see, you know, what's the pond I'm fishing in, right? Am I or am I exactly. fishing in the right pond? And you're saying that what you provide is uh, a similar, a pre-qualification per se for somebody that's looking for a small business. Exactly right. And so a good first step as you're uh, starting this journey is to just see what do you pre-qualify for? Whether you're thinking you're going to need a loan or not, I think it's important to know your options. And what happens often is just like when you pre-qualify for a house, sometimes you might be quite surprised what you can afford and the way mm -hmm. to get there. Uh, I've had calls in the last couple of days, especially it seems like, where folks start off the call thinking they're one territory or they're one unit. And when we start to talk about getting pre-qualified and seeing what they're eligible for, boy, they find out they're eligible for in a lot of cases for a larger project that they ideally wanted but didn't necessarily think that they could afford. So we do provide without hitting your credit, which I think is really important, no cost, no obligation, we can pre-qualify candidates without going to a bank, just as a soft visit to their financials to see, just like that first step with the mortgage broker, what lane should I be shopping in? Can I afford multi-unit? And just to make sure that when they come back to you, Blake, and they wanna start the journey of doing their due diligence and finding the right opportunity, they're comfortable with funding before they even start looking. Gotcha, gotcha. So I, I don't mean to sound like a pessimist here, but if you're not charging for this, is I mean, is there is this actually a credible pre-qualification that you're providing to people? It, it is. I mean, in the last 10 years that I've been here, 97% of my pre-quals have gotten funded. Those are that other 3%. That means we believed we found that we could find them a bank. And either we couldn't, maybe we were we were mistaken, or things change. So okay. uh, what's important, because I'm not the bank, your client will never pay for my services to get them a loan and not get a loan. So if they pay our consulting fee, okay, which is just to put it out there, 2% of the loan amount up mm -hmm. to $2,500. If they get to that point and they pay us and we're trying to find them a loan and for whatever reason, something changes, that client will be made whole. They will get every cent back. And that's the benefit of coming to Benetrends versus going directly to a lender. So we're talking specifically about SBA loans here, right? So yes. you'll go out and shop multiple lenders, multiple banks to find the best deal. And that's, that's what you're doing when you're getting these pre-qualifications. So then if after somebody decides, yeah, I, I do want to utilize you because I found a business I want to invest in and they pay you that one-time fee, if you can't find them the same or better loan than what you put in writing to them before, you'll give them all that money back. Exactly right. Exactly okay. right. And of course the goal is to get them a loan, but think, you know, if things happen or for whatever reason we can't deliver, they will not be out of set on the SBA side. So if, right. if, if you send me somebody, I usually recommend in that first conversation that we get pre-qualified for a loan. Sure. Why and not if there's no charge for it? No charge. They run their credit. They provide some information for me. It's a very quick turnaround, so they're not waiting to hear 24 to 48 hours. They'll get a formal pre-qualification saying, based on the information you provided, here's the, the, the most or your, your buying power. You can afford a, a project up to a half a million dollars, for example. Okay. They want to move forward. That's when we charge a fee and that's when we help them package the loan. They're never on their own. We don't just say here, go give us all your, your tax returns and fill out your forms. We're holding their hand through the whole process. Then we shop the loan. Hopefully we get them a loan and help them through closing. To your point, if for whatever reason that lender, we're not able to deliver that same offering, they would get back every cent. Of course, gotcha. the goal is to always deliver the goods. And you've, I mean, I, I guess what you're kind of doing is you're, um, and the banks know this, the banks that you're, I, I imagine you work with more than 
two or three banks, right? Mm -hmm. And they know that they're competing with each other to get this loan. So the advantage for me, if I'm the one looking for the business is, hey, these guys are, you know, they, they know both as far as their turnaround time, but also as far as they better put their best foot forward if they're offering a loan because there's others in play. That's exactly right. And, okay. and so we're constantly building our resource of lenders. To your point, we, of course, we have hundreds of lenders we work with, depending on the size of the project and the location. Uh, but some folks really want to work with regional banks. So we're constantly trying to throw a wider net to get more regional banks aside from the big banks. But yeah, absolutely. We're constantly working on those relationships. And that's why it's a benefit to a client to come to us as opposed to just going to, let's say, one of the big banks and kind of putting all their eggs in one basket. My goal is always to have a backup plan and then a backup plan for that backup plan, <laughs> just in case, because you just never know. <laughs> that makes good sense. I can't, I can't disagree with you on that. So question for you, We're, we'll continue on this. In the beginning, you're talking about multiple different ways to fund a business. And obviously we want to talk more about that or, or even mul multiple ways simultaneously. Before I forget, I want to go back to the specialty area. So you guys do a lot in franchising. Can you talk more about what a lot means and why? Sure. Uh, 80 to 85 percent of our business in any given year, Blake, is going to be franchise businesses, both startups and resales. Uh, we do fund all businesses. It's not as if we're just a franchise funding business. But the reality <laughs> is most of small businesses that are successful, uh, that have a really great track record that the banks are comfortable with, will fall into the franchise category. Uh, they're very familiar with it. They have, if you're not familiar, the SBA directory, which once a franchise um, is established, they usually get their FDD together and then they get it approved by the SBA. So there's a lot of checks and balances with a franchise that makes lenders feel comfortable and in turn helps Benetrends feel comfortable that we'll be able to get the projects funded and find a place for them to land. Uh, I, I will say, you know, I do do non-franchise and we can certainly help in that category. Uh, it's just the nature of a franchise is perfect for the programs that we do here at Benetrends. And then, of course, the lenders love it because it's a proven concept, especially once you get into a seasoned brand. You're 50 units in, right? You're five years. Yeah. It's kind of rote for the bank. As long as your candidate meets those criteria, the basic criteria, it's a very easy process for us. Very interesting. Thanks. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, lenders don't like risk either, right? So Exactly right. <laughs> Exactly right. And they'll want more. They'll want more skin in the game. So you might have a franchise candidate that's only asked to put in 15 to 20% compared to maybe a mom and pop or a startup organically. And they might be required to put in more like 30%, 35%. I've seen mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So understanding the options is huge. Let's talk about that. You know, we, we put that teaser out there at the beginning that you <laughs> use multiple different uh, uh, ways to fund franchises, not just the SBA loans that we've already talked about. What else? What, what are some of the other areas that you think are important people know about? Well, I'll start with kind of common things that folks think about, but maybe not necessarily put together with the ability to use, for example, home equity for a home. Because a lot of us do think about now that our houses are appreciating, rates are low. I think it's natural for a lot of us to think about oh, well, maybe it's a good year to put the pool in because the rates are low, or maybe it's a good time to pay off some high interest debt, or, you know, maybe pull out some home equity to send, you know, Joey to college. What we don't necessarily always think about is maybe I could use that home equity to start my dream of becoming an entrepreneur. So for starters, because rates are so low, I think folks should be considering if there's an employed individual in the household, because that will be a requirement for proof of income. I do think that home equity is a extremely smart part of the equation today, whether by itself or in combination with other funding. 
especially when we compare that to SBA, Blake, because usually with an SBA loan, you're going to have to collateralize your house. Right. Right. So if I have to collateralize my house and I'm paying 6% interest, if I could do it just with collateral for my house at three or 4% interest, boy, that saves me a lot of money. Not so, a mathematician, but I think that's about half. <laughs> right. You don't have your master's in accounting to accomplish that. Right. But Again, I'm working with folks that have all sorts of uh, different scenarios and they might come to me and not have been working. Maybe they just left their corporate job, which is a lot of folks you guys work with transitioning out of that big C-level job or corporate world. And, you know, maybe home equity isn't an option for them for whatever reason, or they're in Texas and it's not an option, whatever, whatever it might be, right? There might be an issue where, uh, or a situation where home equity doesn't make sense. Where else do folks look? One that folks don't realize is, of course, the retirement funds. So one of the smart ways to fund your business, uh, in my opinion, the smartest way, if you can, is with eligible retirement funds. And we'll talk about that in a moment. I can go through that program in detail. Um, but again, if someone's left their big job and they have a 401k, a lot of folks don't realize they have another option. They could use that money towards their business purchase. Folks who are sitting on a portfolio, if you're sitting with, I have a client who has a million dollars invested in various stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be funded in, literally, he gave me eight days. How could you get me funded? <laughs> and uh, I looked in, I looked at every possible uh, mattress to see if I could find the money for him. But um, he was able to borrow right where it is. He has it with Chase Bank, not to plug J Chase, but he just so happened to have it with them. They lent him, use as you go up to $800,000, so 80% of his portfolio, he still receives his dividends. He's still the holder of the instrument. It's used as you go. He got it for 1.95% interest. So it's a line of credit, basically. It's a line of credit. Yeah. If, if It's just like your house. If the value goes down, they'll adjust the line. But for him, he decided, well, I didn't realize I could use that money. Now he's buying a three-pack. So he's thrilled, everybody's happy, and he was funded in eight days, okay? He was actually funded in three, just to be specific. Oh. But so not only did he buy his first unit, but then he put money down for two more, which everybody's winning, right? And, right. and so, so there's home equity that folks don't think about. Of course, if you have a portfolio at $100,000 value or more, that could be a viable option. And then... SBA loan, which we touched on, and of course, those eligible retirement funds with our ROBS program, where folks could use that without tax or penalty. What's your website, Wendy? It's www.benetrends.com, and I'll move my head so you can see how we spell Benetrends. Oh, so it's B as in boy, E-N-E, trends, T-R-E-N-D-S.com. Correct. And if you need to reach out to me, it's Wendy at Benetrends.com. But uh, I highly recommend that you reach out to Blake and he can point you in the right direction. Well, we're going to wrap it up with that. Obviously, there's a lot more we can dig into this. Maybe maybe we need to have another episode with you, Wendy. But I want to thank you for your time today. Wendy Skemmer, Senior Consultant with Benetrends Financial. We appreciate your insights and probably created a lot of questions for folks. Thank you to all of you for listening to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy. We look forward to having you again on another episode. Have a wonderful day. A Huda Media Production.